TV's Heads Up. We're here today with Gus Hansen and Danielle Lai. Thank you both so much for being here. So we're going to pose some questions to these gentlemen. No limit hold'em situations. We're going to see how their opinions differ and how they're the same. Okay, here's the first situation. You're in middle position and under the gun raises to three times the blind. You have an average chip stack and you look down at queen king suited and you make the call. Flop comes king four nine off suit and the razor bets. Do you smooth call there or do you put in a raise? We'll start with us. Uh, it de really depends on your on your chip stack. I mean, it sounds like if going from just normal term tournament experience, if you make the call, you have an average chip stack. There's only like two bets left in your stack, and if he makes a, a bet and you flop top pair uh, with a good kicker, I mean, I don't think you're supposed, to, if you've called before the flop and you flop such a good flop, I think you're just supposed to play for the rest of your money. And what really. do you think, Daniel? Yeah, like I said, it really depends on... The chip if, stack? So you have like 15 or 16 times like, the blind, and it's... If it's you have 15 or 16 times the blind, you that's the flop you're looking for. So yeah. you're going to want to get it in there. Um... He's probably, his bet, if he bets the flop, you probably don't have enough to just call and, you know, try to get him to bet the turn. I would probably yeah. just put it in on the flop. What if you were to just call on the flop and the ace came on the turn? Would that change what you were what you would do? Uh, well, first of all, when I saw the ace, I would say to myself, what an idiot for just calling on the flop. <laughs> and uh, then probably kind of see what he's doing. I mean, you have the advantage of being in position. Mm -hmm. And usually, I mean, I mean, sometimes when I feel like I played a hand bad, I just try to get away from it as, as cheap as possible. But again, depending on the chip stack, I might decide to make a good lay down if he, if he bets the rest of my stack. Or I might decide to say, oh, well, I didn't, I played it a little slow on the flop, but I'm not going to fold this hand. So, so it kind of depends on maybe what mood I'm in, and, the player. and then obviously the player, I mean, if it's a Phil I Ivy type of player, I think you're supposed to call for sure for all your chips, and if it's a more tight player, maybe you should just fold and, and save your chips for another day, so and it kind of depends. What would you be thinking when that ace hit? Um, you obviously wouldn't like it, but when you just call the flop, I don't think you're, I think you want to get the, the money in there, so unless you can get like a pretty strong read on the guy. It's probably going to be a mistake to fold. You can't justify because, I mean, he, it, yeah. He bet the flop, and unless he bet the flop with like an ace-jack or an ace-queen kind of hand, and that's the only thing you're really going to be behind. Or I guess ace-king, but I don't know. I think I would just get it in. Unless, you know, like I said, you can read his soul, and if he's, <laughs> I think he's got you beat, then you can fold. All right, well, here's the next situation. Now, this is about a cash game. You're playing in a shorthanded 100, 200, no limit cash game. It says three or four-handed. It's folded around to the button, and you're the big blind, sorry. It's folded around to the button, and the little blind limps in. You're in the big blind with pocket tens, and you raise it to 800. The small blind calls. Flop comes seven of spades, four of spades, two of hearts. The small blind checks. You bet a nice bet, say 1,300, and he calls. The turn is an offsuit 10, so you've turned trips, and when it's checked to you, you bet 2,000. He smooth calls you again. The river's the five of spades, putting straight and flush draw possibilities out there, and the small blind moves all in immediately. Do you make the call? We'll start with Daniel. How much does he have? It, it, it well, oh, I didn't put that in there. Small blind has, it, everybody had about 30,000 behind before the hand started. So, I mean, the pot, there was 800 pre flop, 1,300 on the flop, 2,000 on the turn, and then the river, he goes in for a, the rest of his chips. I would recommend betting more on the turn, but if you only bet 2,000, that's a pretty significant bet by yeah. the river. Um, what kind of hand would you put him on there? Well, you 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 give him a pretty good price on the turn to call, so I would probably just give him credit if he's going to put in that much money. But Probably over twenty thousand there. <laughs> yeah, if like like usual though, it depends on the kind of player. If if it's a player that's capable of bluffing, some people aren't capable of bluffing there. So it, even if you bet whatever, you just can't call because they they're not capable of making that move. But some people are. When they see a scare card, they might turn a hand like. Six seven or something that flopped a pair, and decide to turn it into a bluff, thinking that just in case, uh, if they don't think you have a flush, just in case you have, you had them beat, they might just try to take it down there. Um, I know it's such a general answer, but it really yeah, just no. depends on reads. You, well, you gotta just decide. Whether what would you, you think? I'm sorry, because <laughs> what would you think about the check calling throughout that hand? What would that would that make uh, you suspicious? Or uh, well, 
guess I'm always suspicious. <laughs> but uh, I would say, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely, in general, I'm not that much of a cash game, no limit play. I'm much more familiar with the tournament situation. But I would actually agree with Daniel. It seemed like uh, you definitely priced the, the guy in with a very smallish $2,000 bet. And what do you think would have been a better bet on the tournament? Uh, well, you could have bet twenty eight thousand, <laughs> but but uh, no. Uh, in general, I I know a lot of good cash game players who would just simply wait for another situation. There's there's, no there, there's, a, there's basically eight thousand in the pot, and you have to call twenty six thousand more. And there's a bunch of hands that can beat you. Yeah. I can probably find a better spot, but you could have manipulated the size of the pot in definitely a better way. It's not not giving him a giving him a price to uh, to draw on the turn and if you made a significantly bigger bet on the turn you might have Taking priced you in priced you in to actually make the call because the pot would be that somewhat much larger. somewhat bigger and the his call bet would, would be smaller the call would be smaller so uh, again depending on obviously the the player but uh, a move like that my general tendency would be to say that I'm probably beat yeah, it's actually a, a mistake a lot of people make. Um, when they have too big of a hand, they don't want to lose the guy, so they bet small, and they end up putting themselves in a lot of sticky situations. Because if you had bet bigger on the turn, um, one, you get more value out of your hand. Two, you can eliminate some hands from his range. You can say, okay, well, he probably wouldn't have called the pot size bet with, a, with just a flush draw, so maybe if he had a flush draw and a pair, and he can kind of just narrow down what he might have. Um, in my experience, I always like um, defining my hand more because you can it just makes this decisions easier you you, you don't want to be able to protect yourself yeah well you, you don't want to get faced with a lot of tough decisions so by betting stronger not only do you get value out of your hands but you you get more information that makes sense okay well the next situation is a tournament situation so you're close to the money bubble in a tournament and you're fairly short stacks eight to ten big blinds Two players limp in, the small blind calls, and you look down at a 10-8 in the big blind. You check your option. The flop comes ace-10-deuce off suit, and the small blind checks to you. Do you get your money in there, or what do you do? Um, Middle pair, average kicker. I mean, contrary to what a lot of people think, I actually play pretty tight in those situations. <laughs> uh, it's always ugly. Uh, I mean, I know a lot of people are scared of the ace in, in no limit hold'em, or just in general in hold'em, and they should be. People love aces. I mean, they much they they ace play egg. they play a six off suit and they fold queen nine suited. <laughs> I don't really understand why they yeah. do that, but a lot of people they just play aces. They have an ace in their hand. They're gonna see the flop, this and that. So I'm gonna probably tread the waters pretty carefully, and and I might just check it and uh, hope that. I'd, Hope it gets checked around, and then if a seven or a low card comes on the turn, then I'll take a take a stab at it. But I mean, I'm not looking. I'm not looking to go broke, especially with that hand. I think getting rid of my big blind, the small blind, I might have better shots at it when I'm on the bottom, just moving at the pot in, in those situations than with second pair and maybe facing uh, a lucky five out or so. So I generally I like to bet, but. That might be a situation where I just said I had a bad hand to start with. I did flop second pair, but I'm not married to it. And what do you think, Daniel? So it's just two of you in the pot? The small no, there's blind four players. Oh, four uh, the players. two players limped. The small blind called. You're the big blind. You checked. The flop came out. Um, I'm sorry, what was the flop? Ace 10 deuce. Ace, Ace 10, ten deuce. Yeah. And so you had the eight, I mean the tens with the eight kicker. Yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't want to try to get it on because I, don't, I can't imagine you getting called and being... You're only going to get called if you're yeah. beaten. And um, you saw the flop for free, so it's not a big deal. You can. Um, I would just check it and see what happens behind me. I mean, there's a good chance that it gets checked around. And if someone bets and, you know, someone might call, and so it's an easy fold. And in general, you probably just want to, um, like I said, just try to get away as cheap as possible. So if someone uh, bets, you can probably throw it away and have a better shot with your chips later because since you're on the money bubble you might be able to take advantage of the fact that some people might not want to call so you might be able to have a better chance of pushing your money in okay 
So the last situation we're going to talk about is a final table of a $10,000 buy-in event. You have the chip lead going into the final table, and one other player is close to you. The other four are all fairly short stacked and in the same range as each other. So one of the short stacks moves all in, and he's called by another short stack who has him covered slightly. You look down at ace-10 offsuit. Do you make the call there to try and take both of them out, or do you let the short stacks battle it out? What, what play would you make with ace-10? Mm. You got it all in yeah. and all in over the top. As usual, it it, it depends on your feel. I, I I probably play by feel much more than most people, mm -hmm. but um, in a vacuum, I'd say it's you probably are safer just to fold and let them fight it out. I don't think you're ever that far ahead of both of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, there are some situations where the 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 chip stacks might might indicate for you to with call. Pot out yeah, there, with if, the, if the blinds are just if, if, up there. If you have like a lot of chips and they don't have that much, you might want to gamble to take them both out. And if you lose, it's not that significant to your stack. But in in most circumstances, it's probably safer just to fold. And so, Gus, let's say you're in the same situation, but it's only one player all in. What move do you make with the Ace Ten there? Uh, well, I, I mean, first of all, I think there's a very very significant difference in one and two players. Absolutely, I mean, I, yeah. I definitely in the, in the situation, uh, like Daniel said, he thinks it's safer to fold. I think it's a lot safer to fold. Yeah. I, I think it's it's by by far the best play. People tend to, especially in a situation where you're at the final table, where there's significant uh, money to be made by making it from sixth place to fifth place. Mm -hmm. Some guy goes all in short stack, and another guy having slightly covered goes all in as well. Chances are your ace ten is not going to be the best hand. So, but if it's one player, now he could actually more or less have just two cards in his hand. He's just trying to uh, win the at this time uh, probably large blind and antis uh, to try and increase his stack a little bit. So it's much more tempting yeah. uh, to to call there. I mean, in that spot. Again, depending if I had the other chip leader right right behind me, I might not want him to, after I call, move on top of me. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the position around the table. But one player and two players, you can't really compare. Two players, I would fold for sure. One player, depending on the guy and the, and, the, and the situation, I would uh, probably vary. I mean, some situations I would definitely would call for sure. And other situations, I mean, uh, if it was... Uh, a really tight player, I, yeah, I, I, might, I might just fold it. Well, it. It really depends how desperate the guy is. You can get a good feel if someone's desperate. If they, How can you tell? Well, if, if, if the big blind's coming to him and he's only got like three or four blinds, you, he, he knows that he has to make a move soon because he's better off, um, if he gets anything playable, to stick it in there rather yeah. than take a risk that his big blind hand is going to be something you know, worse. Um, then ace-10 is probably... A, good amount ahead of his range so I would be much more inclined to call the short stack than obviously if it's one player and uh, it also depends um, the, the position on the table if you have a few people behind you it like it depends how much the guy has if he's really short you're probably it's 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 probably a money-making call um, if he's not that desperate there's nothing wrong with folding um, you don't really lose anything by folding is not exactly a powerhouse. So. Well, thank you both very much for being here. I'm Lizzie Harrison, heads up with Danielle Lahey and Gus Hansen for Card Player TV.